love reading to our kids. Having our kids read to us would be an exciting new milestone. So to help our young readers get started, we're talking to Red Door Pediatric Therapy today about pre-reading skills. Lexi Hansen is a speech language pathologi pathologist. She is joining us now uh, to talk to us more about it. And thanks for joining us, Lexi. Good morning. Okay, so pre-reading skills, tell us what that is. Yeah, um, pre-reading skills are also referred to as phonological awareness. It includes awareness of the sound structure of words. So the rules of the sounds and the ability to manipulate sounds and words. And um, the skill is highly correl correlated to reading. Okay, this is an exciting kind of time of, um, of development for us at our household because this is exactly what we're working on. So I'm gonna be paying close attention um, to all of your discussion here today, but we wanna talk about what are some of the benefits from these phonological activities we can do with our kids. Um, so some of the benefits are, um, all kids benefit from these pre-reading pre skills, um, especially the kids diagnosed with a speech or language disorder um, because they're at greater risk for later, um, later literacy problems. Um, you can start teaching these skills as early as three years old. Great, so how about, would you want your children to first have a good understanding of the alphabet, be able to start recognizing their letters before you start moving into some of the sounds of the letters? Yeah, I mean, not necessarily. Um, some of the things, um, one of the golden standards is like the learn or the, the rhyming, um, you know, just giving them two words. Do they sound the same? So they don't necessarily have to know or recognize the letters yet, um, just kind of um, discriminate between the sounds of them. Oh, interesting. Okay, because we've been doing so much rhyming around ho the house, and that makes sense why that's going to be important on the developmental um, kind of progress there that we make. Okay, so some of the activities that we can try with our children, what do you mm. have for in terms of ideas there? Yeah, um, there's about seven different ones. Uh, the first one is called syllableness. So you identify the number of words or syllables or even sounds in a word or sentence. Um, a lot of times we do that by clapping out the, you know, the syllables and words. Um, there's syllable or sound blending. So you can take separate parts of a word and identify the entire word. So b at makes the word fat. Um, third one, you can segment where you break down a word into its individual sounds or syllables. So bat would be broken up b at. Um, you can do that with syllables or words in a sentence as well. Um, the rhyming where you can identify words that rhyme or you can find words or produce words that rhyme with a given word. Um, there's sound discrimination. So you determine whether two sounds sound the same or they're different. And the sound position where you can figure out where a sound is in a word. This one is fun for kids, um, kind of like I spy. Where's the k in cat? Is that the beginning, the middle or the end? And then the last one, there's letter sound association where you match the letters with their sounds. So the letter B says B. Okay, all of these are great ideas. And you can see how you can really naturally work them into your day so you don't necessarily feel like you're doing some teaching to your child and they don't necessarily feel like they're in school just yet. But we can always be kind of keeping that on, on our radar so we can pick up on that. And tell us a little bit about why it's so important for children to do these activities. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, one, kids with speech and language disorders have been shown to be at greater risk for those later literacy problems. Um, research has shown that there's a, a pretty big relationship between expressive language skills and then the phonological awareness skills. Um, so really any activity that includes rhythm, rhyme, repetition is a great pre-reading activity that you can, like you said, bring into um, any daily routine. Yeah, driving down the car, noticing something, rhyming it, or sounding out those letters. I like playing the syllable game. That's something I didn't think of. And then that's going to be fun to get the clapping going along, too. <laughs> yeah. Do you find the kids are learning best when they're having fun with it versus maybe they're getting frustrated, maybe looking at flashcards or something if you're really trying to drill that lesson into them? Absolutely. I use a lot of um, songs 
and I use a lot of um, like Dr. Seuss books or Brown Bear, Brown Bear, so that they um, kind of can anticipate what comes next and then really get involved themselves and feel like they're able to do it all by themselves. Great ideas. So those children's books that you know and love from when you were a kid, they're still so important today. There's something about them that really works. So hold on to those. Great advice. Okay, if we have more questions for you guys and maybe we wanna talk through this with you a little bit more, where can we find you? We have locations in Minot, Bismarck, Grand Forks, and Beulah. We have a main line of 701-222-3175. Excellent, and so once again, I'll just go over it again. You said you could start learning this as soon as what age? As soon as three years old, depending on, you know, um, the level of your kid's understanding or participation in those tasks. Okay, good to know, because every child is different. They all progress differently, and it doesn't mean they're necessarily better at one thing, and maybe they just are on their own time with it. Okay, good to know. Lexi Hansen, thank you so much for joining us in Minot. We appreciate it. We'll see you thank next you. time. Thank you. Bye. We're taking a break on North Dakota Today. Stay with us for more.